Chip and Dale. What if I did something like... I am into nuts. <laughs> good, good. I love it. Great stuff. Sorry, everybody. I'm, I'm sorry. It's, the fun police has arrived. No, I really had no interest in seeing the Chip and Deal movie. I've never really seen anything related to Chip and or Deal in the past, so a movie starring them didn't seem like something I'd get a whole lot out of. However, when the trailer released, it became obvious to pretty much everyone that this wasn't simply just a Chip and Deal Rescue Rangers movie. Instead, it also featured a variety of cartoon characters, from Disney, and even surprisingly from outside of the Mega Corporation. A majority of people collectively rolled their eyes at this. Oh boy, another movie where billion dollar companies get to stroke their sausages about all the properties they own. We already got that with Ready Player One and Space Jam 2. Do we really need another? Now see, this made me kinda happy, honestly. That so many people were able to see past this type of lazy marketing. Where to make you want to see a movie nowadays, everything needs to be this mega epic crossover starring every fictional character under the sun. But once the movie came out yesterday, I was shocked to see everybody once again collectively lose their minds at this, overjoyed at how many references they managed to spot within the movie, and that the film in fact was very good. Which like, okay, I thought we were all on board about this being a lame tactic, but apparently not. It seems like these kinds of movies are an issue unless it references something that I personally like. But you know, what I never saw in these tweets were the sentences, you know, I very much enjoyed the characters. Or, the detective aspect of this movie allowed for a really compelling story that I was intrigued by. It was all just, oh my god, references! And so that's where I come in. Over the years, I've become fairly immune to this type of stuff. What I was more interested in was how Chip and Deal was going to be able to fit all these different cartoon characters and styles of animation into an interesting story. Or if it were all just there for show. And after watching it, what was the conclusion? Meh, it was okay. Yeah, no, I was surprised to see that I actually didn't hate this movie at all. I'd never call it anything above alright, but still, I'm quite amazed at how many neat ideas were present here, even if they weren't always executed in the best way. So without further ado, let's talk about Chip and Deal Rescue Rangers, and why it's... not very good, but also not bad, it's just kind of like... somewhere in the middle? Like... What was your initial reaction to reading the script, just right off the bat? <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> you know, I was reading the script like, what? This character's in it? They're doing what? Like I said before, my biggest concern going in was how they were going to integrate all these characters into a story without it feeling forced. And honestly, I find that to be the most well-done aspect of the film. I think the story is without it out the best part of it because of the world they set up. Chip and Deal live in a world where cartoon characters are simply actors, and all exist among humans. And after getting their show cancelled and becoming washed up, they're called into action to help investigate a bunch of reports of missing cartoon characters, who are being kidnapped and turned into slightly off versions to be featured in bootlegs. See, now that's actually a... well, not a clever idea, but it's cool, you know? I can see how they can make a movie out of it. With the wide variety of cartoon characters being actually integrated into the story, it makes this world easier to swallow. What else does this is the fact that they don't present the world as this perfect place that's all sunshine and rainbows, celebrated by corporate unity. It's fucking shitty looking. I coincidentally mentioned in my previous video about Sing how I hated that they presented LA as this perfect, clean, stylized place, when in reality it's a shithole. There are people doing the drugs outside of my Airbnb on the daily, for Christ's sake. But the movie doesn't glorify Hollywood in any way, and instead uses this crossover aspect as an opportunity to criticize how outlandish things are getting in the industry, with movies such as Batman vs. E.T. Although the cynical side of me starts to poke through and questions their lack of self-awareness in a movie that criticizes this stuff, while also being a movie that does the exact same thing. I will say though, for anyone who was genuinely that big of fans of the Rescue Rangers or Chippendale, were you happy that this barely had anything to do with the characters outside of the names or imagery? Does this movie concept scream Chip and Deal to you? Honestly, from the way I saw it, the two characters could have been replaced with any cartoon duo from the 90s, and nothing would be different. But I still have to give it to them. It appears that the writers really did the best they could with a plot like this. You can tell they wanted to do something creative with it. That's not to say the writing is good by any means, and it's definitely the weakest aspect. The humor just isn't very funny, they do a lot of shit where they acknowledge how lame something is, and then do it anyway. Like when Chip laments about how there's nothing worse than an old cartoon character rapping, and then he starts... rapping. Yeah, yeah it's just, it's better because you called yourself out beforehand, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, they're laughing at me. I know that! You can't hurt my feelings if I'm in on the joke! Really, the only things I enjoyed about the humor were the small details that I wasn't expecting. Like when Chip takes off his AirPods and there's like, like screamo music playing. But the writers definitely favored the easier way of making jokes, which are just, remember Pogs? Mamma mia! Ah! 
Oh, it's stuck to my face like silly putty. Remember that stuff? Yes, putty man. I do remember silly putty. Thank you for tickling that nostalgia bone. And then there were parts that just left me scratching my head. Like when they find the reboot machine and accidentally turn it on, and because the riders realized they needed conflict, Chip and Deal just... Just voluntarily jump into the machine, like, yeah, that definitely could have had another rewrite to make it more natural. I also don't like the antagonist. Peter Pan is nowhere near a strong enough villain. If anything, he looks like he'd be the henchman to the actual villain, but no. He's pissed that once he started getting older, Disney stopped coming to him for jobs, and he fell into irrelevancy. Did you guys know that the original voice actor for Peter Pan stopped getting work once he got too old, and was ridiculed by all his peers in high school for playing the character, in which he started taking hard drugs, went to prison, and died by the age of 31, quoting, I was carried on a silver platter and then dumped into the garbage. Yeah, Disney, that's tasteful. Other than that, Chip and Deal themselves leave no presence at all. They're such nothing characters. Chip cries at one point about how he has no friends other than his dog, but the whole beginning establishes that everyone at his work likes him and wants to befriend him, but he chooses not to, so like, why the fuck are you crying? And Deal just wants to get back in the limelight no matter what. And that's not to mention the most boring performances possible by Andy Samberg and John Mulaney. They give every single line with the exact same cadence and inflection. There is no difference for happy, sad, disappointed, it all sounds the same. But that's not what people are raving about, I'm aware. They're all freaking out over cameos. Oh my god, did you guys see Jimmy Neutron? Or, or Randy from South Park? What about Garfield? Or the, 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 the Big Mouth character and Pickle, Pickle Rick? Whoa. I, I know what that is. I just don't know when each movie turned into a big Where's Wally. Did you guys know he's called Wally in the UK? But yeah, it's kind of clever, honestly. Most were probably just too busy looking out for references than to realize how boring the writing was. Sure, like, I can agree that I find some of these references cool, but even in-universe some of them make no sense. Like how there's a Simpsons character present in 1982, yet the Simpsons didn't air until the late 80s. I do at the very least enjoy that they wanted to replicate more than just 2D and 3D art. And we have a variety of mixed media, with my personal favourite being the Seth Rogen character when the gang visit the Uncanny Valley part of town, even if they do say that the style came from the early 2000s when in reality it was more mid to late 2000s, but that's a minor nitpick. What isn't a nitpick is how dreadful the animation looks at times. It's, it's weird to me when ugly Sonic is the best animated character in your movie. Also, them having Sonic in the movie doesn't make it good, not even I'm that much of a shill. But other than the putty guy and Seth Rogen, who by the way was supposed to look bad, so like, congrats I guess, you did it. My main complaint would have to be Chip. If you want to make such a distinction between your main characters with one of them being 2D and the other being 3D, it could have been useful to actually, I don't know, animate them in 2D? At the beginning flashback clip, we see that they actually did have the ability to, but I can only assume that budgets restrained them to this shitty cell shaded type thing. Except, I don't even want to give them the budget excuse, because I can only imagine how much money was spent here on licensing out some of these characters. And don't give me that shit about how the cell shaded thing was what they were going for in-universe, because we see them in this style in the 80s flashback, where CG of this quality wasn't possible and every other character was 2D. But it looks like one of those licensed PS3 games, not a genuine attempt at recreating 2D art. Although, even when they do that, it's rather hit or miss. There are times when it looks really good, mainly when they're not interacting with the human world, such as bootleg Bart and Homer at the end. But when there aren't humans, it looks atrocious, like Linda from Phineas and Ferb. And there are even times where they fucking, like, use a live-action person and animate a face and hands over top it. It's weird. Even though I have a lot to complain about, I'm shocked at how much I didn't mind Chip and Deal Rescue Rangers. I certainly don't regret watching it, and I was anything but bored. There certainly was the part of me that enjoyed the anticipation of not knowing who's gonna pop up next. But if I look past all that and analyze it as a movie, it's just kind of forgettable and not worth noting. It's pure style over substance, and even then, the style isn't always good. But for what it is, I'd recommend checking it out. You'll most likely get something out of it. There are a lot of good ideas present here, and you can clearly tell the writers cared. But other than some neat visuals and being the most ambitious crossover in history, it's just sort of whatever. You know. Maybe I would have rated it higher though if it had Brian Griffin.